Hey, what's happening? My name is D, and welcome or welcome back to another episode of Book Reviews from a Regular Dude. Today, I'm going to be talking about Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. And this book sort of haunted me for a long time before I read it. <laughs> I heard about it on a podcast called Infatuated, which I've mentioned before. They're on hiatus right now, but I am that podcast's biggest fan. They had a special guest on, and she was talking about Prior to the Orange Tree, and she said it was like a feminist retelling of Sir George and the Dragon, and I was like, I don't, I don't know what that is, but it's got dragons in it, so sold. So I went and bought it and um, sat on my shelf for a really long time. I don't know what it is. Like, I'm not a big fan of high fantasy. I've said that before, but I do love dragons i blame dragon ball and american dragon jake long but yeah it sat on my shelf for a long time and i, I just didn't read it for like months i think i was intimidated by the size of it because i didn't realize that the margins were huge and the paper super thick it's like the same length as um i never read any of the harry potter books um uh, the phoenix one what is that one called um Order of the Phoenix? Is that it? Don't at me. Anyways, um, if you don't know this book, you've never heard of this book, which seems unlikely. I'm going to read the premise for you real quick. A world divided, a queendom without an heir, an ancient enemy awakens. The house of Berthnet, no idea how to say that, has ruled Innis for a thousand years. Still unwed, Queen Sabrin the Ninth must conceive a daughter to protect her realm from destruction. But assassins are getting closer to her door. E. Durian is an outsider at court. Though she has risen to the position of lady-in-waiting, she is loyal to a hidden society of mages. Eid keeps a watchful eye over Sabrin, secretly protecting her with forbidden magic. Across the dark sea, Tane has trained to be a dragon rider since she was a child, but is forced to make a choice that could see her life unravel. Meanwhile, the divided East and West refuse to parlay and forces of chaos are rising from their sleep. Since I've read this book, I've heard that it's overhyped by a couple of reviewers, especially on Book Talk. But to be honest, like I've only really seen this book included in lists and I haven't seen a lot of videos or heard a lot of people really dive into why they do or don't like this book. I will say for me personally, like as an individual, Priority of the Orange Tree was not as overhyped as Legendborn was. I only heard really one person dive into how much they loved this book before I read it. And when I was reading it, I was like, yeah, everything she said she liked about this book is in here, which was mostly dragons and women with corsets with knives in them, which I'm into. I mean, not like that. Okay, maybe a little like that, which I guess leads us straight into things that I liked about this book. First and foremost, there's dragons. I like that the Western dragons are like your typical medieval fantasy dragon, you know, fiery and smoky, four legs, wings. And then the Eastern dragons are like, you know, Chinese dragons. They're water-based and they don't have wings and they kind of slither through the air, which I thought was really sick. And I appreciate that there's an attempt to make this feel like a really global story. You get like a, a, a bigger sense of dragons as not just like one type of thing. I think that it, it makes sense that different cultures would have different reactions to different dragons, especially since, you know, these ones are fiery and chaotic and whatever, and then these ones are kind of like, I think more of the embodiment of the wise dragon trope. I like Eid as a character. Um, I think of her as kind of the main character, and um, you know, she's rebellious, but she's badass, and she's got a sense of right and wrong and a sense of duty, and she's just trying to do the right thing, and I respect that. Although I don't really feel like I got to know her super well in reading this book, which is weird, right? Because again, this thing is fucking huge. Like, you'd think there'd be time to get to know one of the main characters. He's a mage, right? She got magic powers, and I thought it was really cool that the members of the secret society, the members of the titular priory of the orange tree, get their magic powers from eating a fruit from a magic orange tree. That's kind of like the pillar of their religion. I thought that was kind of cool moving on to stuff that i was kind of conflicted about this book's pacing kind of whack it's a really slow burn and then it's just over when i finished the book i had to go back and reread it a couple times because i was like man what the fuck just happened i think samantha shannon's writing style might be a little too wordy the narration is kind of repetitive and it can seem like it's 
being insistent but is not making a point it's just like describing shit i think sometimes writers want to pretty up their writing by adding more words but i always tell my students in my poetry workshops that less is more don't tell us how you feel show us make us feel it leave space for us to feel it and sometimes in like movies or tv shows the most impactful moments are the moments where there is no dialogue there's just like a sound effect like maybe dripping of a faucet or rain falling outside or the buzzing of fluorescent lights or something like that. I guess I'm saying like try to describe things or, or use the setting or the scenery to create an emotional effect. I don't know. I'm not a novelist. I'm just spitballing here. Kind of find with the world building, um, you are kind of put right in the middle of the things and you got to figure it out. But I didn't have a problem doing that. Not everybody feels that way, but it didn't bother me. That said, since the writing is pretty wordy, you would think that things would be explained in great detail, but I don't think things are explained super well. And as cool as I think it is that this world has a bunch of different religions and different countries and different beliefs. Um, I don't think any of the religions are fleshed out all that much. And this world's like politics and the story itself kind of hinge on different religions and different beliefs on dragons that each nation has. And I, I don't remember, but I don't think it was ever explained as to how these divides came about. Maybe that's something a day of fallen night dives into i don't know i haven't read that yet but what i'm trying to say is i can understand why a reader might be left wanting a little bit more I think that this book does a lot of like yeah you get it right sweet moving on and so if you don't get it you're kind of lost and again i think that's weird because this thing's fucking huge so there should be time to dive into the history the politics and the religion to you know give us a better sense of why things are the way that they are and and why these characters like have the convictions and motivations that they do. And I think it would help the world feel even more lived in as well. I feel as though Samantha Shannon's like authorial voice isn't very strong in this. And what I mean is like, I don't think her writing style really, there's nothing distinctive about it. You know what I'm saying? I wonder if maybe it's just in this particular book because I know she's written like a, a long series that's pretty popular or was pretty popular, right? Um, I think she was once called like the next JK Rowling or something, which nowadays may not be the greatest compliment. Um, but that was a thing. Um, and I wonder if that series is a completely different style than prior to the orange tree. Maybe she just like, isn't used to writing high fantasy as opposed to whatever. I don't, I don't even know what the other series is called, but, um, yeah, because like if I tried to write in a completely different style of poetry or try to make a completely different style of music, I'm sure that my distinctive voice would kind of get lost as well. So I think it's probably just that. And I, I've heard that the next book, which takes place before this book, is stronger from a craft perspective. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't think this book needs to be as long as it is. There are several like point of view characters in this book and i don't think they're all necessary or at the very least i don't think we need to spend that much time on all of them like for example there's like an alchemist who was banished from the queen's court uh we learned his tragic backstory but it doesn't really pay off and i don't think his character arc is completed so he could have just been a side character like pushed more to the side there's a witch who i guess is like the villain and i don't think she even needed to be in this book like you could have written her out of it and it, you wouldn't feel like a lot was missing. I'm not that conflicted about this. I lean more towards I just straight up don't like this, but there's a romance between Eid and Queen Sabrin. And well, I don't like Sabrin as a character. She sucks. She is so dumb and arrogant. And that but there's a weird power dynamic here that I really don't like. Like for one, Sabrin is the queen of her country and Eid is her servant. I know she's actually like a secret agent mage or whatever, but Sabrin doesn't know that. She just sees her as like her servant and Sabrin's like depicted as white like I, I think she has like platinum blonde hair and pale skin and Ede is depicted as a person of color and within the context of the world I, I don't think that's really an issue other than I, I think maybe her country is like xenophobic but because fiction doesn't exist in a vacuum it's influenced and informed by our world this kind of power dynamic of the servant of color and the white woman in power just doesn't sit right with me and it, it comes across as kind of tone deaf and i think that it points towards some unchecked biases there's nothing in this book that i straight up don't like except for some mother-son incest that gets briefly mentioned i that why 
why why why why do villains have to be gross like that like there's got to be another way to make the bad guy seem bad right this book is a slog to read for sure i think like halfway through this book i put it down and i read the entirety of the renegade series by marissa mayer in between it's a YA superhero series. It's super fun. I hope it gets adapted one day because that would be hype. I don't know. I just, I guess I just didn't really care enough about these characters to like keep reading and find out what was going to happen to them. I just want to finish it to say that I read it, you know? <laughs> so was it good? Um, I guess it is fine. It's fine. Did I enjoy it? No, nah, no, nah, not really. Would I recommend it though? I guess so. Enough of my friends who love to read love this book, so I guess it's just hit or miss. I would never tell someone not to read it, but I also wouldn't tell you to read it, you know what I'm saying? I, like, if you told me you were thinking of reading it, I'd be like, yeah, cool, do you. I didn't hate this book, but I really didn't like this book. I think it's, it's like, convoluted, but it's not complicated, which is, it's, it's boring. I almost wanted to do, like, a Danny Mata-style joke where I'm like, Priory of the Orange Tree? More like Priory of the Board Tree, am I right? Honestly, I think this should have been, like, a duology or a trilogy or, or some kind of series. I heard in a podcast that it's essentially, like, four 200 page books mashed together and at that point you might as well just separate them and make them like four 300 page books or something taking a little bit more time to flesh out the characters the world the religion and i think you would have had a richer story for it because i think there's really cool stuff in here it's just that it's not paced great and the world and the characters feel kind of lackluster or hollow or something. At some point, I am going to read A Day of Fallen Night, which is, it's not a prequel, but it's in the same world, and it takes place 300 years before Prior of the Orange Tree happens. Um, I've heard that Samantha Shannon's writing um, like improves from a craft perspective, so I'm, I'm excited to read it. Um, I guess, I think. Anyways, I think that's it for me for this week's book review. Thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you made it to the end. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, and when I do, I'm gonna do like a fun couples review video with my wife. We have like super different book tastes, and we're gonna switch like each other's favorite books or whatever, and, and review the books at each other, which I think will be really funny. I'm going to try posting like bookish and bookish-ish content like twice a week now. So stay tuned for that. I got some fun things planned. I'm thinking maybe I should do like a, a booktube newbie tag or something at some point. I don't know if you have to be tagged in that or or if you can just do it. Um, but I also don't know if anybody like cares if I answer any of those questions. So I don't know if you have questions for me. I'll do like a get to know you Q&A type video. So if you have like questions for me, you could throw those in the comments. If you have like book suggestions, I'm making a list of things to read and or review. So you could throw those in the comments. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything. So thank you again so much for watching. My name is D. Don't fret. I'll see you next time. Peace out.